Yes, Mr. Camier, in your full race team shirt, all sponsors on show. I like to see <laughs> in your boot room or wherever you are. Got to be professional, mate. It's in the oh. toilet, actually. But of course. Right. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. No, that, we won't explore that. <laughs> this is your tenth year in World Supers. Yep. Tenth year. It is. Have you had fun so far? Uh. Few ups and few downs, plenty of downs for sure. Um, yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been hard, no doubt. I, it's not, I've not done what I sort of wanted to, if you like, in this championship. It's it's uh, obviously it's hard. It's the best of all the domestic championships, sort of more or less rolled into one. Um, and yeah, it's it's the same as we already know. If you're not quite on the right kit, not quite the right time situation, it doesn't all quite happen. And uh, yeah, I've I felt like I've had you know some good shows on some bikes and some times where it's not gone as good as I was hoping. Obviously, um, you know, like the first year in the championship with Aprilia, for example, was 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 such a difficult situation. Um, Stinky, I believe the expression is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was not. Not ideal at all. Um, there was a lot of politics in the background, which weren't uh, obvious to everyone on the outside. No. Which is fine. It, it is what it is. I had to, I had to get on with it, and uh, you know, I was learning the, the championship and whatever else. And um, what, what was the but, hard? What was the hardest part, part about the Aprilia? Yeah, for me, there was quite a few things. To be honest, that I, I never felt that comfortable on it. I never felt like uh, I. It was my bike. I never felt at home on it. I felt like I would have weird crashes all the time. That I never understood the same crashes we had for two years, and no one could understand what it was. Um, was that, I mean, or, were were people tinkering with your bike behind your back and not telling you? And because because we all know that sort of thing goes on. Yeah, hundred percent. There was. A, a good chunk of that going on like uh yeah the, the amount of breakdowns and stuff i had compared to to my teammate was just phenomenal it was was phenomenal yeah like you, i could go on about it and you know bl pass blame or whatever but yeah i mean you can there was two sides <laughs> there, there was there was that side of it and then there was i was struggling with the bike i didn't feel that comfortable on it um yeah i never felt like i had a lot of support to sort of help me sort of teach me you know I was obviously relatively young and uh it was just a difficult difficult situation um yeah. but it, it was what it was uh and then yeah obviously went to Suzuki and had some good races some real strong stuff on a what was essentially yeah a, a privateer bike with, with Paul Denning um and for, for a small team and whatever everything they had they we, we did a good job sometimes you know we stuck it on the box quite a bit and had some really good rides uh and then, yeah, then I ended up uh, looking to go a bit of a situation, but yeah, ended up looking to go GPs and was it 14 with Aprilia, with Iota. Yeah. And um, that was back, backed by the fact by Aprilia at the time. And then Iota lost a sponsor, so I ended up with no ride. Uh, and then I did the MV thing for three years. Um, and that was plenty of ups and downs, uh, a lot of downs, but also, you know, considering the situation we had, it was was good you know we we had some good results and on on yeah the, the the money the the budget the team had the bike we had i think we did really good sometimes you know oh, there were some awesome rides on what really was a pile of crap yeah i mean the, the the guys only had what they had it was like it was sort of seen as a factory team but there it was anything but that yeah there was no no money at all like when i say no money you can't imagine how I can imagine. I can imagine paid. not having much money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same here. Uh, <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was, uh, it was a difficult situation, but some good good things come of it, you know. And then, um, yeah, then we went to Honda, and that started off really good uh, with a, with Tenkate. Bike was a lot better than I had first expected and yeah. I think throughout testing we were like top three through testing uh Phillip Island was like okay was strong for a lap I remember we've always been strong for a lap on the bike but race distance was a bit more difficult and then um yeah and then uh we changed electronics which is partly my fault 
uh, and partly, you know, everyone's decision to do it. It was a group sort of decision, um, thinking that we would make another step with different electronics. And it just, we never got that feeling back. Um, we went to, yeah, Thailand race two, you know, we were qualified third, looking at, looking at a good year. You know, I was really confident for sure this year we will be on the podium a lot and, I, you know, we could hopefully look at trying to win some races. And I got uh, smashed up in round three in Aragon. With the new electronics, TC didn't work properly, and I went down. Jordi Torres hit me and broke like six ribs, damaged the lung, shoulder, um, and then yeah, come back from that, and then uh, went testing in Japan for the eight hour HRC, and uh, then broke my back out there. So <laughs> it was just a, a disaster of a year, to be honest. And then 19 didn't get much better when HRC finally stepped in. It was the bike from the, the Japanese Championship. Um, nothing changed at all all year with it and yeah I had multiple shoulder injuries and ongoing problems so it was never a never a simple simple situation never got no. a good rhythm and got into it. Has it been I mean you've been injured for a long time is it getting on your nerves a bit now? Literally Massively. Getting on your nerves a bit now. You, you can't understand that, you know, from the outside, it's maybe looks easy. Like you just brush yourself off, get over it, and then it's all good again. But I can honestly still say I haven't slept properly for two years. I just, well, that, I just that, can't. That, that I'm always children. In pain. I told you, I warned you. Yeah. Don't have children, <laughs> you, you won't sleep properly. <laughs> Did you pay attention? No. He definitely doesn't help, but no, he's, uh, he's good as gold, really. But. No, it's, it's been horrific. I can honestly say it's been uh, such a hard time in my life to cope with with all of that. You know, for my own head, for, to keep motivation, to to wanna to wanna do it. You know, and it's not to have that last bit of speed that you need to be really strong. It's uh, you've got to you've got to have to be so convinced in your head that it's all about going fast it's you know yeah. you've got to be so committed that is, there could be no doubt in your mind about what you're doing and if you're if you're struggling constantly for a long time with with sort of pain and injuries and stuff like that it's never a good thing but um yeah now, i've gone how, how do you convince yourself to because after you, you spent so much time with mashed up shoulders and being in a lot of pain and the rehab how do you motivate yourself to get back and about by going it's not going to happen again it's not going to happen again it won't hurt again because i that's the bit about you guys that i don't get because i've hurt myself and gone, i'm not doing that again because that hurts <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a good question uh i i don't know the answer really you you just sort of get on with it like i guess the dream is bigger than the than the little downfalls if you like you know you you have to keep reminding yourself of why you're doing it and and uh of the positives but it's not it's not easy for sure it's not easy but is it you easy? know you can have one injury you get over it come back but when it's multiple continual going on and on it's like whew, it does weigh you down for sure is it is it the, is it still trying to achieve the dream that you had when you were a kid or is it a bit about providing for the family or both or no, mine's uh, mine is to achieve the dream of when I was a kid. It's, if if I want to go and uh, if I want to go, if, I, if it's about providing for my, for my family and the rest of it, I wouldn't be motorbike racing. But everyone thinks that you know that we're earning so much money and blah blah blah. But I can tell you, when you're if you're not winning races or consistently on the podium, you're probably not mm. not earning what much at all. Uh, and same for my situation now. It's, it is what it is. But I've uh, I want to try and try and achieve my dream, and that's why I'm sort of continuing to do it. And hopefully, hopefully, can figure things out, get a bit of momentum in a good direction again. Because yeah, we've we've all been there. You know, you've highs and lows of motorbike racing. You go through the lows. You've just got to keep trucking on, and eventually, you'll you'll come back on a good path again. Hopefully, and uh, yeah. That's where I, hopefully I'm at again now with with Barney. It's, they seem like a re really good team. I've obviously not done done many laps with them on this bike, but uh, they've sort of proven themselves in the past, and 
highly, highly passionate thing. So with any luck, I can, I can get some good momentum going again. How did the deal with Barney come about? Um, I think we spoke in Porto Mayo, I think it was, um, last year. Um, yeah, and we were still waiting on sort of HRC, but I sort of had a feeling, you know, they weren't sure what they were doing because they were, you know, deciding to put all this new team together. Um, and HRC obviously being pretty secretive, didn't want to sort of let anyone know the situation. Um, and I sort of got to a point where I was getting no answers and I sort of went ahead and was pushing the Barney thing and yeah, just trying to, trying to get a good option together where I felt like I could be, have an option to be competitive again. And, um, yeah, that's, that's what ended up, ended up happening. Were you disappointed that you weren't kept on by HRC or secretly pleased? Whew. There was two sides to it. I, I sort of knew, we sort of figured out very early on that last year wasn't about them being fast. It was about them learning the championship. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it took 10 months to make a seat unit. Like, if I say that, you, we, you understand, like in any other team, like what I've been in in the past, it takes a test. Maybe you go to the next test and it's already ready. At worst, you go to the following test or race or whatever and it's ready. It was never their their priority to to be strong in that championship. So there was no progress made with the bike. It, nothing changed, really. I think we had like a couple of upgrades in the middle of the year, um, which I was out for. Um, but I, I obviously I know in the future they're going to be strong. They 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 know yeah. how to build a bike and put together a situation. But last year was just a, a figuring the championship out for them, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, in the long term, obviously that they would be a good situation to be with. But short term, it was uh, it was pretty difficult for sure. What um, what are you doing now in terms of training and fitness? How is how is the shoulder now? And I see you've grown a moustache, which is nice. <laughs> beautiful, isn't it? Well, yeah, let's go with beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> um. Training, I've just been sat on a bicycle most of the time, to be honest, on the turbo trainer. Um, right. and what like, is, that like indoor, and... is that in like indoor stabilizers? Those things, pretty much, yeah. Right. A little roller on it, yeah. Ooh. Uh, I've just been flat out on that, absolutely, uh, burying myself on the bicycle. And then I've got some like, um, little elastic bands and stuff just trying to keep some strength in the shoulder and uh, some small free weights and that I've been using. Actually, Chaz is free weight, so I managed to go and steal him from his house while he's he's not here at the minute. Um, <laughs> Where else have you stopped him from Chaz's house while he's not here? Yeah, I, I should have had a good rummage round, shouldn't I? Yeah. Go if you're still not there, go go back to what you can find. You can might find some trophies that I can get. Yeah, eBay. <laughs> no, I keep them on my wall. I think <laughs> make out their mind. Just change the name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've got one. I've got one of Brooks's. Um, BSB winning trophies at my house. I don't know if he knows I've got it or not. No, no, no probably not. <laughs> he'd, he'd want it back for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so how, uh, how's the shoulder? Is it? Are you, are you are you somewhere near where you need to, need to be with it now, or is it are you fully recovered? Or um, no, not fully, not yet. Um, I had the operation Christmas Day, um, and it was. So it's the same operation that Marquez had, that he's had twice. Yeah. Where they cut the bicep tendon, reattach it on a different point, but I'd broken the point that they normally attach it to. So, uh, and that's where I had the other false ligament put under. So two, two operations, one went, uh, when it basically broke all the ligaments uh, on, the, on the collarbone that attaches your shoulder. Yeah. So my shoulder ended up dropping down. So they put like a false ligament in, it goes under a bone called the coracoid process. And it just like clamps the, the shoulder up to the collarbone. Right. Uh, I broke that bone, but luckily the, the false ligament didn't come off. So they couldn't attach, when they did this other operation, they couldn't attach the bicep tendon to that. They had to attach it to somewhere else. Um, but this has been <clears throat> a long, long recovery. Um, and each, each, each case is different. You know, obviously I was pushing pretty hard to get back from when I'd first done it. 
and because I didn't have an option, we were racing, we were testing within like, you know, a few weeks or months or whatever it was. Yeah. And racing within a, a couple. So I had to try and push to get back fit, but it didn't help at all. It may, if anything, probably uh, sort of slowed it down a little bit and needed just some time to settle. Um, so this has been ideal, this, this, um, this break for me. It's been the perfect time to actually let it recover. And, um, and it's, it's not perfect yet, but it's so much stronger than what it was like. The progression is, is going good. So, are you, I mean, are you expecting to get it back to as it would have been had you not damaged it? Or will you have to put up with a certain amount of pain and or movement issues or whatever? I don't know, to be honest. Um, I'm told from doctors that it'll get back to, to normal. You'll never, it will never feel exactly the same, but it will perform the same. It right. always, uh, it, it will get back to, to good. So, um, yeah, until I get back on the bike and can, you know, do everything like I would normally, I don't know how it's going to be. But from everything I'm told, I'm pretty confident it will be, uh, it'll be good again. And how, uh, how's the team? Uh, Barney, uh, on the phone, reasonable amount or are they, is everything a bit, everything a bit quiet? No, no, he's, bless him, he's, uh, he's on the phone every couple of days just wanting to see how I'm getting on, what I'm up to, training, blah, blah. Uh, you know, he's still been working on the bike. Um, right. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's so passionate. It's, uh, it's a bit of a breath of fresh air, to be honest. It's, um, it's, it's good to see. It's, it's good uh, that he's so passionate. You know, the team's small, but they've got some, got some good people in it. And, um, yeah, gives me some motivation for sure to get back where I hopefully need to be. Are you, are you on a one plus one with him for this year and next? Or? Just one. One Just year one. deal. Yeah. So, I, I actually think it's going to be quite interesting to see uh, how the satellite teams recover from this situation. I think there's going to be a lot of teams that can't come back from it because you yeah. imagine like a, a lot of teams have a lot of small little sponsors, little technical sponsors, people that help make the big pot of money to go racing. And uh, where's that going to come from now? It's going to be difficult. A lot of them are going to be, yeah, in every championship. In World Superbikes, massively, I think. Um, same in, I think, British Championship and same in, in all sport. So have you got a... Um do six or seven races, six or seven meetings this year to say to Marco, right, this is what we can do and this is what we're going to do next year? Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. If, if I come back and I'm strong and, and everything's good yeah. and can perform, then, yeah, who, who knows what can happen. Um, that's the priority. That's the first objective. As soon as I can do that, then we'll see what happens for, for the future. But, yeah, priority for me now is just to get back, get back strong and... Uh, get back in the right place and get some results.